Hello everybody, this is Stephen Allison and this is Transfer Talk. It's been a while since we've done a Transfer Talk, but you know what? It's the 1st of November, which means it's basically silly season time, isn't it? Where the transfer rumours now start to ramp up. So I've got three of the bigger ones, the three of the more intriguing ones for us to talk about. So let's just get straight into them then. The first one is Gelson Martins of Sporting Lisbon. Right-sided midfielder, attacking midfielder, bit of a right-winger. Seems like United interest has sparked a little bit of a new contract offer for the sporting player. And uh, while he's already got a £60 million, pound, or 60 million euro release clause, uh, they don't think it's big enough. And they're going to up it to €80 million, Euros, which is far beyond anything that I would expect Manchester United to spend on a player that is having a decent season. But do you know what? He's a little bit unproven. What's interesting is that he's only on about 100 grand a year in terms of wages, which is something I wouldn't mind being on. But for a, prim a top flight footballer, as a Premier League, even a Premier League footballer, that's not a great deal. Manchester United's under 18, some of them are on more than that. So um, I think his wages could have something to say in all of this lot, but it looks like Sporting are about to offer him a new contract. So I think it's probably going to be quite unlikely now, especially if they insert that contract uh, clause saying that he's got to have £80 million pound release fee before they, or €80 million euro release fee before they let him go. We're going to have absolutely no chance of getting him over the line for that sort of figure because he's simply just not worth that sort of figure at the moment. Um, but it does seem one that we've got a bit of a firm interest in. We definitely need a right winger. He definitely needs someone that's going to dribble. And I like the look of him. Not at those prices, um, but... I think there might be some legs in this yet, so if he doesn't sign a new contract, they might have to cash in on him, and that's hopefully when we can swoop. Uh, the next one that we're going to talk about is Jose Jimenez. So, Atletico defender, centre-half. I like the look of him, but he's not playing in the uh, Atletico or Atletico starting eleven at the moment. And while he's only 21, it means it's not the end of the world. We've got a lot of young, up-and-coming, promising centre-halves ourselves. So why we would need to go, especially when they're talking about that, this guy's got a £56 million release fee. So you're talking about him being basically the most expensive centre-half in the world if you want to go for him like that. And do you know what? I like the look of him, but I don't like the look of him that much. Why can't we just give someone like Axel Tuanzebe a bit of a go, realise that he's a reincarnation of Rio Ferdinand, or the best thing since Rio Ferdinand, and then we don't need to sign anybody. You know, whatever. Um, Jimenez, I don't see us going for him. Not at them sort of prices. The fact that he's out of the sport, uh, Atletico starting eleven means he might look to move, but it's a step down probably unless he goes to someone like Manchester United, which at the moment is probably a step across really. I mean, it's a bigger club, but you know, we're not playing in the Champions League at the moment. No certainty to be playing it next year, so if I was him, I'd probably sit tight on this and uh, and ride it out. The final one that we're going to talk about, Luis Suarez. I want to throw up thinking about him in a United shirt. Don Ballon reckoned that United interested or are interested in him and uh, we're willing to spend £135 million to sign him. The fact that he's loved in Liverpool is enough to make me say no thanks. The fact that he's a diving, cheating scumbag is enough to make me say no thanks, let alone the biting. The fact it's 135 million is enough to make me say no thanks. But I will fucking riot if Manchester United sign a man who racially abused one of the most loved players at Manchester United in Paddy Evra. Evra's like family to us at United. Evra got us. I'm tempted to even use the word legend when I speak about Paddy Evra. When you see what he'd done and the attitude and the way he, that he gave everything for the club. If you sign someone like that, that is a betrayal of everything about Paddy Evra and everything that he won and worked for and the connection that he built with the fans. You can't do it. Blood is thicker than water. And Luis Suarez can fuck off. So I hope that's uh, enough of an analysis on how I think the transfer of Luis Suarez to Manchester United is going to go down. And I don't think I'm on my own in saying that I would not be happy to see Luis Suarez I couldn't bring myself to celebrate a Luis Suarez goal. It's just It just feels wrong, doesn't it? There's certain things that you're just not allowed to do in life and Luis Suarez playing for United after what's gone before is one of them. No, off limits. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. What do you guys reckon? Throw it in the comments. Can you ever see Luis Suarez in a United shirt? Would you, would you ever want to see Luis Suarez in a United shirt? <sighs> if he won a Ballon d'Or, would that rehabilitate him in your eyes because he's he's up there as one of the favourites for it at the moment isn't he for me no matter what the fuck he does 
I never want to see him in a United shirt. I would rather us see us relegated than, than lower ourselves to signing someone like Luis Suarez. Because we can come back from a relegation. You can't come back from a betrayal of someone who's loved like that, like Paddy Ever is. So there you go. That's Transfer Talk. Might be another one next week. Um, there's a FIFA journey mode coming out on the gaming channel. So I'll throw the description, a link in the description below to check out um, the journey. And if you're not um, subscribed to the gaming channel, then go and subscribe to it if you're into all that sort of stuff. There's retro gaming. Retro FIFA was the one I uploaded yesterday. So go and check that one out. Um, there's all sorts of retro gaming from Donkey Kong to Mario Kart and all that sort of mad shit all on the gaming channel. So go check all that lot out if you're into it. And um, there'll be two videos out tomorrow, one of which will be Football Manager, whether that's the new one or not. We'll have to wait and see whether Football Manager let me release it. And the other one is going to be the podcast. So tune into this channel for the podcast. Nine o'clock tomorrow. It's not Thursday this week for obvious reasons. We've got the match. Uh, and wait and find out who is joining me. Hopefully it'll be a pleasant surprise for you. Thank you for watching. See you in a bit.